Hey guys, it's Tammy. Um, it was sunny and now it's kind of getting fuzzy. <laughs> if you watched my last video on why I love essential oils, um, or my, yeah, it's really about my passion, you know, and why, why essential oils. Thank you. Um, and thanks for being here. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, thanks for being here. Um, again, my name is Tammy. Um, I am an aromatologist with a background in pharmacology, the science of nutrition, which is basically um, the study of the nutrients and how they impact um, our epigenome and overall health. I've got a lot of opinions about all of this, and um, I think we are overdoing everything um, at this point. You will hear me often say less is more, and there's a good reason for that. Um, but that is not what this is about. This is actually about essential oils and aging. And the reason this came into existence or this entire thought process is because the other day, um, of all things, my 29 year old son, who's my third son, walked in and was proudly showing his gray hair. And it just shocked me. So we got into this long conversation about gray hair, and he's a little bit um, intense, <laughs> and he has his own mind and his own opinions, which is great. And so, um, and it's difficult to hear sometimes our thoughts about what aging is, and especially having done the, a level of research that I've done and coming to understand what we are, who we are, and how we are. I I just can't wrap my head around or I can no longer buy into the decline in health is age related. It is. So it is. Obviously we see it as we get older. But it's not an aging process. And I don't know how to say that to where it actually makes sense. So it's the result of aging, but it's not Aging doesn't cause disease. I mean, us being here, I should say time. That's what I want to say. Time does not cause disease. What's happening in a system is the adaptations that are, are occurring on a regular basis. Nature is, is designed. It's wired to adapt. It just adapts. That's what we are. We are, we are consciousness. We are, in many respects, um, consciousness. And, 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 you know, it's just an animated version. I mean, an extension of consciousness. We are a physical form of consciousness. And we have these opportunities to experience life. And, um, but we are consciousness. That's what we are. Um, how we are is the fact that consciousness moves forward. It adapts. It's constantly reacting to everything that's just nature communicates via chemicals and it's, there's just always these it's just navigates it just there's a fluidity and that's how we are and this is how we experience the decline in health because if you think about the advent especially in our timeline okay the introduction of so many chemicals and so much technology that nature has to learn how to get around it or it doesn't even have to learn. It doesn't, it doesn't need to know anything. It just does. It just, it just goes in a direction that is an alignment. This is one of the reasons why I like the oils because they actually help create that alignment. They help improve the you know, align it in a way that's more of a to a benefit to our existence. I didn't say that on the last one. I need to remember to put that in the description box. So when we talk about aging. It's really about, it's when we're, I should say, when we see the decline in health, even in the, the signs of aging, what we're seeing is the bodies, yes, there's wear and tear. Yes, we do a lot of things to our bodies as we, you know, through our life. But there's also the lines, right? There's the gray hair. There's the aches and the pains. And I think what I struggle with is the fact that we try to normalize this. And our young people are growing up thinking that it's normal to be more tired and to have aches and pains. And even though that's been somebody's experience and it's been an experience of the majority of people, that doesn't make it right. 
it doesn't make it so. It makes it somebody's experience. And the thing is, is that we're buying into these stories. And instead of kind of taking a step back and recognizing the fact that our bodies are merely reacting to the environment. Now, <clears throat> I think I've talked about this before. We And I've talked about gray hair before, I remember, because we don't know what people look like prior to photographs. We don't know. We have some ideas, there's etches and sketches, and but we don't really know, you know, um, what I do know today, and, and there wasn't nearly as many, there weren't as many chemicals, and there certainly wasn't the air pollution, and I mean, there was a lot of things that they didn't have, that even in the last 100 years has grown exponentially. So today we see people, and this is, and so when we talk about aging and we talk about the signs of aging degenerative health is one of those but although we're seeing it happen in people much younger these days um low testosterone does not have to be although that is happening in younger men i mean this is not the fact that men are getting older it's a it's a representation of hormonal disruption if you look at it that way so with gray hair Think about how many people you know that maybe you haven't seen them in a while, maybe a year, maybe a little bit longer, and the next time you see them, they've really aged. Now, we don't look at them and go, wow, you really aged. Maybe we do, depending on who, what your relationship is. But we try to keep it on the down low. But you can see it even in yourself, possibly. You can, If you've had a hard year and you can look at yourself in the mirror and go, wow, this has been a rough year. You can see it on my face. I look tired. That's, you may be exhausted, yes, but there's more signs showing up um, that would not, maybe maybe not have shown up had you not had the level of stress. Yeah, dare I say it, stress. So again, if you've never seen me before, welcome. Um, there's mental and emotional distress. There's physical distress that occurs, especially from the mental and emotional distress because we're no longer breaking the foods down properly, the macronutrients more importantly. Then there's the environmental distress. So the stress mechanism is basically our means of survival. This is what the body does. It activates the stress mechanism for survival. And so as soon as that happens, we don't break the foods down. Now we've created even more physical stress. And we're not using the nutrients properly. And so our chemistry has been changed. Is it's in survival mode. It's, there's a reason. It's a good reason it's been changed, but it's been changed nonetheless. And ongoing distress consistently keeps our chemical chemistry, our neurochemistry out of sync with thriving. Therefore, it it's constantly altering the physiological functions. This is the reason why we see blood sugar issues and diabetes. This is the reason why we see weight gain or weight loss. This is the reason why we see cardiovascular and respiratory issues. This is the reason why we have autoimmune disorders. This is why. So let's just take a look at gray hair. Okay, because when he started comparing it, I could look at him and honestly say that he actually has more gray hair than I do. Um, when you actually look at my roots, and I've had hairstylists do this, you might see a couple of strands. And I'm about to say something that I don't want to say, <laughs> but I'm going to say it anyway to make a point. And that is going to be 56 this year. And, um, but I've been working with and using oils with myself for a, basically the last 30 years. I know I've done a couple of videos and I've talked about it at some point. I didn't use them as often, but they have always and consistently been a part of my life. I've been more intentional with the way I use them, depending on what I've got going on. And at the same time, the fact that I include them in my day is 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 well the there's been a re, there's been a slowing as far as I can tell um, when I sit with Amish people um, people yeah, people that are younger than me I mean they're fully gray they have a lot more wrinkles on their face yes there's timelines on mine but the fact is is that I. I'm using that as an example because my son, who's 29, actually has more gray hair. His, his the lady he's dating um, is just a few years older than him. She's really got a lot of gray hair. Um, and again, that's just gray hair. But you can also see age in people's faces. Okay, so 
and in my case, you can absolutely see that, I mean, I don't produce collagen as well as I could, but I never have. I could get into the specifics about that, um, which is when I, my mother was pregnant with me, she wasn't allowed to eat anything but carrots, celery, and saltine crackers. So essentially my body has been in distress most of my life. So I've done a lot to combat that. Don't mean that intentionally. I don't mean as like, I would, I think to offset that. But the fact is, is like I said, you know, my kids have more gray hair than I do. Um, I can, I can attest to that. Um, but the fact, the reason why we have gray hair, I mean, I should stop saying that. I'm not going to sit here and pat myself on the back. I am proud of the way my body is aging or the way I'm getting through life. And again, you can, I mean, I'm human. I live on this planet. I am not immune to anything, you know, as far as stress is concerned, the environment, I'm exposed to everything that everybody else is. But I have been able to successfully offset a lot of the things that I was told that I was coming down with or was developing. I've been successful at helping other people. And when we talk about um, endocrine disruptors or hormonal disruption, like I was talking about with the low testosterone, my son actually said, well, how come you see more men going gray than women? And I don't, it's hard to say because I know a lot of people like to um, color their hair. So it's really hard to say who's doing what. But I know men will proudly wear their gray hair more so than a woman will. But at the same time, I'm seeing a lot of beautiful women with gray hair. And it's becoming a, a thing. We're trying to normalize gray hair. And it is a part of our process. But here's why we have it. Because the body is not producing the nitric oxide. Nitric oxide synthase, which is a genetic complex, has been altered in response to the stress mechanism. It is a primary genetic complex that is, it, I should say it's an, a crucial genetic complex that is important to fostering good mental health and emotional health. It also is involved in the activation of the, auto, uh, of, the auto, of the immune system, and it has been stated that they, there's a the definite link between that and autoimmune disorders because what's happening is the immune system, estrogen is a signaling molecule that will activate the immune system or signal that the immune system needs to kick in. Okay, so what ultimately happens is that when estrogen's high, and I've talked about this before, estrogen's high, histamine goes high. And when histamine, and when all when those two are high, we're seeing a higher level of yeast in the body. So it, it, it creates a whole host of symptoms, irritability, brain fog, digestive issues, and so on and so forth. Okay. So, but when this is happening, like I said, nitric oxide is not getting produced at a, at a level that would help us to thrive. Therefore, our, our energy levels drop. We begin to see cardiovascular issues. Um, we see, again, we see digestive issues. And it, because the estrogen is, and it may not even be your own, it could very well be the environmental estrogen signaling this, it's going to override the testosterone. Okay, there's going to be more of it. So we're seeing lower testosterone levels. This is the reason, one of the reasons why you, we might be seeing more men with gray hair because their testosterone levels are, are shot out as a result of these environmental estrogens. But the same thing is happening in women. I don't know that I could say more men than women. I just think from a male perspective, that's what he's seeing. But what happens when nitric oxide levels are reduced as a result of this high estrogen level, we are no longer, um, I'm sorry, back up. We are actually producing more hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is one of those reactive oxygen species that is produced when, nit when, when there's been adaptations to the system, aka oxidative stress. Okay, so we produce hydrogen peroxide. And the reason we produce it is, um, I'm gonna, I may sneeze, so if I do, pl please bear with me. Um, hydrogen peroxide is actually produced as a means of storing um, heavy metals. I believe it's more specifically lead. Um, and you think about all the gas fumes that we've had or that we do have, and if it, you know, who knows where the lead in is, but that could be an indicator that there's heavy metals in the air that are activating the production of hydrogen peroxide. That is because it actually is what how one of the reasons how we, um, like I said, we store these metals. <clears throat> um, 
We also produce hydrogen peroxide. Um, it's one of the first combatants against when we get a cut. So we are producing it, but we're producing it at higher rates. And this is the reason why we're seeing a lot of gray, because it's an indicator that you're making too much hydrogen peroxide and not enough nitric oxide. So there is an example of hormonal imbalance right there. Oftentimes what I see is people like this have food sensitivities, um, definitely digestive issues, gluten, um, and so forth. Um, that means there's a lot of histamine in the, in the gut. And again, there's estrogen present. Now we have, we're producing histamine. It's, a, it's, a, it's not because we don't need the histamine. Again, estrogen signal, signals the activity in the immune system. Histamine happens to be one of those chemicals that is produced in response to, um, for the need for inflammation <clears throat> and to protect the body. So when you're talking about histamine intolerance, you might want to look at what foods you're eating that could, are phytoestrogen. You want to get rid of those. You want to stop those for right now. Um, you absolutely want to stop um, taking probiotics without question. I don't care. You know, you that is actually potentially leading to even more issues. Um, if you have gut flora problems, unless you're taking antibiotics, the best thing you can do is get yourself on a hydrochloric acid supplement and get on oils. I just did a, a uh, IGTV video that um, I'm uploading to YouTube. And I'm it's not going to be published. If you want to take a look at that and hear what I had to say about the um, digestive system and oils, let me know. I'll send you the link. Um, but that is the whole point to essential oils and, and aging. It does enhance skin, the quality of the skin. I may not produce a lot of collagen, but I can at least maintain the moisture in my skin so that I don't look like a dried out raisin. Thank you. Um, for now. Pardon me. Because living in the desert, I can dry out pretty well. Or it, it, the potential to dry out is really good. I'll say it that way. I have no, pardon me, I have no judgment against it. It's just that I know what, what's possible, especially when you live in a dry climate. But my skin is able to maintain its moisture. And um, I'm not saying that I'm not going to show signs of aging. What I am saying is that the oils are really slowing this process down. Um, I hike every day, about an hour, hour and a half, straight up. I, you know, I, and it's not just on a trail, flat trail. I actually hike um, rocky terrain up um, massive hills. Um, I do yoga um, about five or six days a week, and um, I can get into postures that um, I probably shouldn't be able to do, but I'm very proud of myself, the strength that has developed. So I credit this a lot to the oils because if you guys really want to know, um, especially this is February 3rd, 2019 that I'm recording this, this last year from mid-January of 2018 to the just a couple of days, just till, you know, my life has been extraordinarily um, challenging. And um, if I was going to say that I had a tough year, I had a really tough year. And you can definitely see the age on me. I mean, it's not like I'm, again, I'm not immune to it. I'm just proud of the way my, that I'm, I'm able to offset as much of the distress as I am. So just to recap, why do we have, you know, why are we seeing aging as a problem? Why are we seeing physical challenges and the signs of aging? It's due to endocrine disruptors. It is due to the body consistently being stressed and taxed by chemicals that it doesn't need. And so it's trying to, it's really trying to keep us alive in, in the face of um, toxicity. So the more we can do to relieve our mental and emotional toxicity, the greater, the greater, the better off we're going to be. Um, but like I said, you know, the oils can help tremendously, um, again, relieving that distress. And at the same time, I just realized that when we're talking about high estrogen levels, you want to make sure that you don't use oils that are going to influence that activity. There's definitely oils that have estrogenic effects. You want to make sure that you avoid those. You want to make sure that at least for the time being, it's not a forever thing. And if you want some guidance, let me know, because this is what I do. I can, I can listen to what's going on with you, with, you know, and we can figure out the best oils for you, even if you're familiar with them and have your own. I can at least consult with you and help guide you into which is the best solution for you right now. But keep in mind, 
your body is a walking chemistry lab. So that means you're, and as I mentioned earlier, we're constantly adapting. Our system is adapting to all of the information coming in. So there will be changes that will be, will be needed. But don't worry about it. Right now, we just need to get you to the point where we can stabilize this. So avoiding foods that are, you know, phytoestrogen foods, and that's going to really take off a lot of people. I realize that there's people who have a histamine sensitivity and are intolerance, and they have to avoid those kinds of foods. But if we can at least eliminate that phytoestrogens with oils that you use and the foods that you use, you can't get rid of what's in the environment. That's just not going to happen right now. So we have to be careful. Use skin, make your own skincare products. Sign up for Aromatherapy as a Lifestyle. Learn how to make skincare products that will benefit you and actually not add more, you know, more um, uh, unnecessary chemicals. And speaking of that class, I just wanted to say that Aromatherapy as a Lifestyle is not a good title, but it is the best I could come up with that would might attract attention. But the truth of the matter is, it's very clinically based. We go into the physiology of the body and how to integrate the oils at a clinical level, but on it, but it's usable. It's usable information. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's absolutely usable, and you can use your own. I'm not going to tell you that you have to buy oils from me. If you want me to blend for you, I'm happy to. And um, then there's, of course, the breaking the cycle of disease management, which I have broken up into parts if you want to do them in, in segments or if you want to buy the, if you want to get the whole thing. I, yeah. So um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else as far as um, stabilizing and improving nitric oxide. I would just really, if I had to say anything, I would really just consider at least oils that will benefit your digestive system and soothe that. Actually address your symptoms and help improve your body's ability to break down the macronutrients. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Visit my website, tell me, um, no, it's at synergessence.com. Synergessence.com, my email is tammy at synergessence.com. Follow me at Tammy Davis 8 on Twitter and Instagram. I'm going to put in the box below the physiological effects of stress so you can check that out because this is significant. And these, these effects are what's actually adding to our aging process. But these things, while we cannot slow the movement of time, so to speak, we can relieve, not just relieve the stress, we can actually slow down. We can slow down the process of anything. We can slow down the process of aging. We can slow down the process of progress of health issues. We can slow it down. We can, I don't, again, I'm not going to say we're going to heal anything. I'm not going to say we're going to cure anything. But what I can tell you is you can absolutely slow that progress down. So, um, with oils, with oils. And again, there's no right way or there's no, there's no wrong way. It's just a way. And this is my way of um, helping people who have not been able to find any other solution for their health problems. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I love you guys. Be well and let me know what I can do for you. Thanks. Bye.